there's been a lot of hype about the global secure access feature that's been released recently. Actually, I've seen videos as early as July about this feature, but it was really made interesting when the private access feature came out and made available to me to take a look at. And I've been taking a look at that this week. So let's take a look at what I mean. If we go to global secure access preview in the entry portal, we get to this page which says get started with global secure access and we have Microsoft Entra internet access and Microsoft Entra private access. Now private access as you can imagine is how we can access private stuff within our data center. So for example I have a, uh, a computer right here it's just there and I it's connected to Azure AD it's managed by Intune and I want to connect to my Hyper-V server that's, that's hosted in a data center somewhere else and that Hyper-V host is going to be hosting things like app servers, file shares, all that kind of stuff in my own premises environment. And this computer here is just on the internet somewhere in my house. So global secure access, enter private access, is that the, is that the proper name? Is a way to connect to those services in on premises from the internet. And we had this with uh, Azure AD App Proxy back in the day, but now we can do something called quick access, which allows us to give access to the entire network portion and then connect over TCP to any port. Let's take a look at what I, what I mean. I'm gonna set this up from scratch. So let's just quickly go through it. It shouldn't take too long, I think. Let's go through it and see how it works. So firstly, you can see I've got this menu open here, but what I'm gonna do is go to connectors and you can see we've got this default connector group here I'm going to create a new connector group and call it cloud hyper-v because my hyper-v is actually based in the cloud and I'm going to I'm going to click create and now I've got this cloud hyper-v uh, connector group here with no connectors in it at all but I want to download a new connector and put that in my on-premises environment so I could click on download connector service but actually I need to hop into the on-premises environment in order to download it there rather than here. So let me just go over to, to that server right there. And here I am again. So just down to private access, down to connectors. And from here, I'm just going to choose download connector service and then read that. Make sure I've got all the prerequisites in place and choose accept terms and download. I'll go ahead and download it. There it is. It's actually still called the Azure AD App Proxy Connector Installer, but never mind. We choose open. I'm just going to install this. Uh, okay, the connector was not installed. Let's take a look at my server, and I reckon I've still got uh, the enhanced security on so, so I can't actually browse the internet which is what I need to do to log in. I'm just going to turn that off for a moment while I reinstall this. Oh, there it is. Just install the, the existing one I've already got. Choose agree. Agree. Install. Get this installing. And just log in with my global admin. There we go. Okay, that's installed. I can probably head back to here and just have a look at the connectors that I've got. And what I'm going to do is just go into Cloud Hyper-V and add in my connectors. I've done one and two just now. Okay, that's all done. We'll choose save. And fantastic. I've got both my connectors in there now. Okay, so now we have an application proxy connector group with a couple of connectors in it. So both those servers, HYD app one and app two, both have the app proxy connector on it. Next, I'm gonna go back into, in fact, I'll just move over to the big screen there. So, okay, so from here, I'm going to go down to uh, applications and now we've got quick access or enterprise applications. I'm gonna choose quick access and I'm gonna call this Cloud Hyper-V and these connector group Cloud Hyper-V and 
save that. Okay, so we've got that in place. Now we're going to add a quick access application segment. I'm going to go with uh, side annotation IP address range. I'm going to start with 10.0.0.0 and I'm going to make that a mask of there we go, 128 addresses. I'm going to go with 3389 as the port, the RDP port here. And I'll tell you why I'm doing that. If we head back to our Hyper-V host here, I'm just going to show you what IP address we have in this on-premises environment. So there we are. This lab that I've got in my on-premises environment is running on 10.0.0.0 slash 24. So we have a range of around 254 addresses that we can use within this environment. And I am going to connect with 128 addresses. So there we go. That's the range that I'm creating as the application segment. So this is the range that will be available to my remote clients. So I'll choose apply and down to save. Perfect. Okay. So 10.0.0.0 slash 25 with port 3389 should be available to my computers. So let's download this client then. So I'm going to grab the client download link here. You can see we've got clients available for Windows 10 and 11 as long as they're intra joined and we have local admin permissions on the device in order to install it. We also have Android, iOS and Mac OS coming right now. They are private preview, so we can't actually take a look at that yet. Let's grab this link here. I'm going to head over to my machine just there and I'm going to browse to this website. Download this secure access client. In fact, I've already got, got it from earlier on. There it is there. I'm just going to install this. Choose yes. Give that a few seconds to install. And because I'm using an Intune managed uh, Azure AD joined device, enter a joined device, this should work pretty well. I'm gonna go ahead and see this work. Let's jump into that, it'll ask us to sign in. Okay, so we're connected. You see we have something called M365 connected and private connected. I'm gonna go into what M365 connected is later on but for now we're looking at the private side of this so where you should be all green now if we look at this uh, client here and if we just go into connection diagnostics you should see that we have this host name acquisition should go green in a second there you go so what i'm going to do now is try an rdp into my remote server so this computer that I'm showing you right now is sat behind me in my office, not connected via a VPN or any kind of tunnel to my on-premises network in the data center, apart from via this global secure access client, which is going via the internet. So let's just try it now. I'm going to try remote desktop and I'm going to go with 10.0.0.103. That's me to sign in again. Access. So, ZTNA network access client private, we're having trouble signing you in. So you can see as I tried to connect to that IP address, it said, I can't let you in because you haven't been granted access to this application. Now, the application that you saw was the entire network that I'm trying to connect, connect to. So let's see what it means. I'm gonna go back to Edge here and take a look at the enterprise applications that we've got. Open up those, and I've got nothing. So quick access, edit application settings. And you can see I've got an application called Cloud Hyper-V. And if I go into users and groups, I have no users and groups assigned to that at all. So I'm gonna go with add user, tap in my name, choose select and assign. Give that a few seconds. Now it is possible also to uh, use conditional access with this to make me need either a compliant device in order to connect or uh, MFA, for example, 
I'm doing the very basics for now just to show you that the connectivity works in the first place. So I've given that a few seconds now just while I was talking to you. Let's go back to the laptop and close this down and tap in the password just there and there it is it's my app one server choose yes okay so let's take a look at some IP information here now this app server is hosted in Hyper-V in a data center of nowhere near my house that computer over there is the one that is remotely connected via RDP through the secure access client. Let's take a look at what happens when we go back to the uh, web browser and we're just going to scroll down here to nope, to global secure access, choose monitor, traffic logs and you can see what we get is this private access here that I've done from my source IP and the amount of received bytes. Jumping into the dashboard, you can see we've got seven destinations, one device and one user. So in just a few minutes and just a few clicks, you've seen that I've been able to connect to my on-premises data center from my Azure AD joint computer just behind me. I have no connection other than the internet to my on-premises data center very far away from my house. And this computer is only connected to the internet and the global secure access client. This is completely going to change how we can access our on-premises data centers in the future from cloud-only devices. This might mean we can go cloud-native much, much quicker than we've been able to before. See you next time.